hey, I haven't read to you in a while. I know. Well, I've been reading, but I haven't read to you. That's okay. Early morning, I did my you know morning prayer ready and my little uh, floor exercises. The dog should be running around pretty soon trying to get me to take her out. But that's a little bit later. Um, that's, okay. It's like I got to read a, a large passage to you. Just be, be patient, okay? As you may or may not know, the book I'm, well, one of the books I'm currently reading is uh, The People Know. The People, comma, know, <laughs> N-O, uh, from... Uh, uh, Thomas Frank, uh, it's called A Brief History of Populism. What you said. And uh, Thomas Frank is the same guy who wrote a bunch of other books. Uh, uh, the most popular ones that you probably would know would be Listen Liberal and uh, What's the Matter with Kansas. He's written other books. Uh, so I've been going through this book. Uh, another book I just finished, well, I finished reading, but you know, it stayed with me. You know, you know. Breathe. I know it's breath. I know it says breath, but I say breathe. I bought the book. It's my book. I pronounce it any way I want by James Nestor. You should be. You should be dealing with this. Good for your health. So I finished that, and I'm going to exercise in the back of the book. I incorporate with my my other exercises too. Okay, so I'm going to read this uh this uh, lengthy thing to you. Just as in Citizen Kane and Meet John Doe, because those are films that you might know about, right? You know, uh, the Citizen Kane is a famous one by Orson Welles. Great movie, hey, eh? you know? And uh, Meet John Doe is uh, with Frank Capra, I think, you know. Um, and the, well, you know Frank Capra. Good good filmmaker, too, you know? I personally, uh, from that era, I personally uh, like that one that uh, Jean Reno, yeah, Jean Reno did. Because yeah, it starts out with the following the cable for radio. Oh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Um, the deep baritone voice of the whole takes a slap at demagoguery and racism out of the cheating, out of the shouting, out of the murders and lynchings, out of the windbags, the patriotic spouting. One reason Robeson's, okay, now I talk about Robeson. He was, because that's that song, that's a famous song. Oh, I, I didn't go to the preamble, okay. The famous song by uh, Paul Robeson, that Paul Robeson song called uh, The Ballad for Americans. You should, you should listen to it, it's a good song. Uh, and in that ballad, uh, but, but one part of it says, because uh, uh, an American meeting at that particular point, this like nineteen late 1930s, uh, uh, I'm just an Irish, Negro, Jewish, Italian, French and English, Spanish, Russian, Chinese, Polish, Scotch, Hungarian, Luvik, Swedish, Finnish, Canadian, Greek, and Turk, and Czech, and double Czech American. It's a song, right? And then he goes into this other thing that, that he just mentioned, you know, uh, you know, uh, 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 out of the cheating, out of the shouting, out of the murders and lynchings, out of the windbags, the patriotic shouting, uh, spouting, uh, spouting, S-P-O-U-T-I-N-G. And one reason Robeson's multiculturalism made as much sense as it did in 1939 was because immigrants and children of immigrants were everywhere in the Depression-era populist culture. Frank Capra, uh, the great Vo uh, Valeri, Valeri? V -O -L -A -R -Y, Valeri, I don't know what it means, gotta look it up, um, of the small town myth was born in Italy. Floyd Olson, the radical Minnesota governor, was the son of Scandinavian immigrants. So was the poet Carl Sandburg. Sidney Hillman was one of the most creative labor leaders of the period, and was born in Lithuania. The proletarian preamble that all these people embraced was, to uh, a surprising degree, the polyglot populism of the recent arrival, the CIO, the voice of mass working class mobilizations, was particularly fond of it. You might even say populism, populist multiculturalism was their house style. Now we hear that, you know, we hear that today about immigrants coming in and everything like that. So they're harkening back to this era. Now what they don't mention here, what I get from other books and what's going on right now, is of course the plight of what we call the ADOS, or the American Descendants of Slavery, or as I like to say, the North American Descendants of Chattel Slavery. Now what's important is that, they don't mention that because all these groups that came in, they came in uh, and they embraced whiteness, you see, 
And this whiteness means that you had to step on the, or actually we say Negro here, but the ADOS, because that's how you got ahead in America, you see. So, I, so in other words, I'm reading this book, I'm reading Bridget, so some books I'm reading, and, and what happens is you put it all together in this era. So when, they, when he was, when he's writing, or when he, okay, this guy here is writing, uh, Frank Thompson, he's writing about right now, but he's not going to, he's not dealing with ADOS reality, okay? He's not ADOS. He has no, he has no framing of that. He's a regular liberal like that. Man, wait now, we're not ready yet. So, so, so it's what happens because stop banging on the thing. Go, go over there. Banging on the cameras now with you. Um, and so, so his reference is is being a liberal. You see, I mean, he, and he wants to reform, you know, America. He wants to, you know, save the Democrat Party. I guess, you know what I mean. Meanwhile, ADOS, who has never got a big, uh, a good shake, you know, we're trying to, you know, get uh, get reparative justice, you know, and and that's that's the, that's the whole uh, crux of it. And so many things that happen in these days is that's very very interesting. Anyway, I just wanted to. I'll share that with you. It's the end of the month. What's my, what's my thing? Oh, it's the end of the month. So uh, um, I'm, I, technically I'm supposed to be finished with this book, but I like it and I want to stretch it on because the next book I'm reading, I'm going to read right away, is um, is uh, Greg Palace, uh, Greg, Greg, Greg Palace, Palace. I know Greg. I know Greg. What am I messed up with his name? His book uh, about how Trump stole 2020, which hasn't done yet. But anyway, that's the book. So I'm going to get that right away and read that before, you know, in October, right before the November elections. And I'll still be reading this. Then I got to get another book by Greg, uh, Greg, these Gregs, man, by uh, Gerald Horn. So anyway, just to give you an update, a little update from me, Teddy from the Pattersons, taking the train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect. Got to walk to